Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Welcome 2021 Virtual Hackathon. Uh, it's great to see so many of you here today. Um, so before we begin, uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Um, if I could please ask everyone uh, to stay on mute um, while the presentation is taking place. Um, if you'd like to ask any questions during um, the presentation, feel free um, to put the questions in the chat. Uh, we'll be monitoring those and we can answer those uh, at our dedicated times. Um, if you're asking a question to anyone specific, uh, please could you use the at symbol and then the person's name just so we know who the question is directed to. Um, and yes, with that, um, let's begin. Uh, so for the order of events today, uh, we're going to start with uh, a welcome and an overview, and that will be by Ben Dayton, who is the managing editor of SciDev.net, and myself, Tom Challoner. I'm a data analyst at Cabby. Uh, we're then going to have an inspirational talk from Eitan Greenwood, um, who is an insight specialist at the Wellcome Trust. And then we will follow up with that with a walk through the data from Beatrice Locatelli, who is a consulting analyst from Gallup. Um, after those two talks, uh, we're going to pause for a second and have a QA. and uh, That will give you an opportunity to ask any questions that have arisen from listening to Eitan or Beatrice's talks. So specifically around the Wellcome Global Monitor, the data, etc. Um, then we will come back to the presentation uh, and, and I will go through some key information on how to get started with the hack. Um, if you, uh, we encourage you to uh, tweet about this event and uh, you know your hackathon as you go through the next couple of weeks and the hashtag is hashtag WMonitorHack and uh, that's for the Welcome Global Monitor Hack. And uh, the launch event today will run from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. UK time, and that is 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Kenyan time. Um, so with that, firstly, it is my pleasure to pass over to Ben Dayton, uh, who is the managing editor of SciDev.net. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Tom, and welcome, everybody. Um, if you don't know SciDev.net, um, we're the world's biggest a news outlet focusing on the impact of science on low and middle income countries. Um, in the African region, we have three editions. We've got um, an English language edition led by Ocheng Ogodo. Uh, you'll meet him shortly. We've got a French language edition led by Julien Chonwon. And we have a Arabic edition based in Cairo led by Bofaina Osama. So, if you haven't already, please visit SciDev.net. Uh, you can sign up to our news alerts. And we also have a um, data visualization article on the Welcome Global Monitor. So please check that out. Um, in case you're also wondering what CABI stands for, CABI is our parent organization. So it's an agricultural research organization. They back SciDevNet, so you'll see their logo everywhere. Um, we're really happy to be with you here today. It's been a very long road. Uh, the idea for this hackathon started back in 2019. We planned to rent out a conference room in Nairobi just after the next Einstein Forum in March 2020. Of course, you know what happened. Um, two days before we were meant to go, we were told by the Kenyan government that all flights have been stopped. And there followed months of discussions with welcome about the best way to do this. And we eventually landed on the idea for this uh, virtual hackathon. So it's a really exciting moment for us. And it's, um, I'm sure this pioneering event, it will be a great success. And I wish everybody the best success. And back to you, Tom, thank you. That's great, thank you, Ben. Um, so I'll continue with the um, overview of the event first. Um, uh, so firstly, um, as we know, the hackathon today uh, and the hackathon, well, the event, launch event today and the hackathon for the next just over two weeks focuses on the Welcome Global Monitor. Uh, there is a Welcome Global Monitor from 2018, and very recently, uh, the Welcome Global Monitor from 2020 has been published too. And collectively, uh, these are the two largest global studies on how people around the world think and feel about science and health. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more detail here because Eitan and Beatrice will go into more detail in their talks, but effectively the hack for the next two weeks is taking a deep dive into these data sets, generating novel insight and um, looking at the regional, regional or local perspectives in Africa. And we'll go into some more specifics on that later today. Um, 
the hackathon team. Uh, there's a lot of people to thank for uh, making this hackathon happen. Uh, so Ben, who just spoke, um, Ocheng, uh, who's the regional coordinator for Sub-Saharan Africa uh, in English uh, for SciDev.net, um, Calvin, who is the user engagement coordinator for Sub-Saharan Africa um, English edition in, for SciDev.net, um, Juliet, who is the monitoring and evaluation and marketing coordinator for SciDev.net, and Hilda, um, who is the data consultant um, on this uh, hackathon. And there's also other people uh, to thank as well from Cabby and SciDev.net for uh, um, ensuring this event took place today. So really exciting and thank you to everyone that's been involved. Um, so uh, to meet your fellow participants, um, we have 41 participants uh, for the hackathon um, and a little bit about your background. So the word cloud here shows um, the background of each participant and the size of the word is how common uh, that word was in the role um, of each person. So we can see we have lots of scientists, uh, lots of journalists, lots of people that work with data um, and statisticians. And then we can see there's a whole wealth of other roles there as well. So it's really exciting to see such a diverse um, crowd of participants um, for this hackathon. Um, in terms of background, um, lots of varied experience uh, on data analysis as well. So we have lots of people that um, have experience using Excel um, and quite a lot as well that have experience using Python um, and R as well as other software too. So great to see a, a real mix of experiences there in data analysis. And in terms of that experience, uh, we have quite a lot of um, participants that describe themselves as advanced or intermediary with a couple of participants that self-describe them as beginners. Uh, so have a real diverse mix of participants and it's great to see you here today. Um, the participants have been um, split into eight groups, so you will have received um, an invitation to join your group on Microsoft Teams. Uh, we'll go into some more details on that later. Um, we'll go into some more details of that later. Um, and oh, could I ask please uh, whoever's not on mute to please mute themselves? I'm just getting a bit of background noise, thank you. Um, and uh, we'll go through some screenshots uh, later in this presentation about like how to use the Microsoft Teams page uh, most effectively. Um, if you're having any problems ac accessing um, accessing that um, Teams page, uh, please feel free to email me. My email's on the screen now. That's t.challoner at cabby.org. Um, I would say that from what we've experienced so far, one of the most common reasons is because the email address that you've been invited to join Teams is not the same email address you are signed into Teams with. So I would just make sure that the two emails um, are the same first, but very happy to help any participants that are struggling to get into Microsoft Teams. Uh, we also have four facilitators. So uh, our four facilitators are Eitan Greenwood, uh, who I introduced earlier, Hilda, who I've introduced earlier, myself and O Cheng as well. So the four of us are here to provide dedicated support to the groups um, and we'll go into some more details later about this kind of support that uh, we will be able to provide to groups and which groups uh, we will be facilitating. Um, so what's in it for you to be here at the hackathon? Uh, a range of different reasons. Uh, firstly around capacity development. Uh, this is going to be a great opportunity to develop, further develop um, your skills around analytical tools and get some hands-on experience analyzing some very impactful data sets and being able to work collaboratively as a team to do so. Um, it's enabling you to join a community of practitioners that have similar interests to you. And with that affords uh, real networking opportunities um, that when we're joining that community. So we're really uh, hoping for lots of engagement um, on the Teams page. We, we will show you later, but we've given you dedicated um, spaces to be able to introduce yourself, um, to network, um, and provide support to each other as well to further develop your analytical um, experience and skills. Um, an honorarium is available to every participant who engages with the hackathon, uh, that's hundred pounds. Uh, that honorarium is given for full engagement. So that's um, you know, participating in the hackathon over the next two weeks, uh, contributing to your group um, and then attending the closing event and being part of that um, presentation uh, with your group. Um, We've said previously the hackathon is running as a competition. Uh, the judges for the competition will be revealed at the closing event on the 17th of December. And the group that wins uh, the best hack, uh, there's a 500 pound cash prize uh, that will be shared among the participants in the group. Um, and finally, our certificates of participation will be provided at the end of the hackathon as well. Um, so lots of uh, reasons to be here today. And again, great to see you all here. 
Um, so with that, I'm going to pass over uh, to Aitan Greenwood, uh, who um, will go into more detail, provide some background around uh, why we're here today and, the, and provide some more information on the Welcome Global Monitor. Uh, so over to you, Aitan. Great, thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, my name is Aitan Greenwood. I work as an insight specialist at Welcome. For those of you who don't know, Welcome is the largest funder in the world of health research. Um, we are currently now focused on three key areas of health research, mental health, infectious disease, and the impacts of climate change on health. We feel these are the really pressing global problems that, that science can solve. So I work within the Insight team within corporate affairs. Welcome has been surveying the general public. It started out doing that within the UK in 2009 as part of the UK Monitor. Welcome started commissioning these surveys because of the importance of the public perspective on health research. The public play a really important role around trust in science because it's important that health research is, is people-centered and also to understand the extent to which the findings of health, findings of science are benefiting the public. So that public perspective has always been really valuable to us. So we started these surveys, we do them every three years, but obviously welcome, we're aware that we operate globally, we operate with global problems. So we had this really wonderful opportunity uh, in 2017 to uh, work with Gallup and commission them to expand, effectively expand the UK monitor to a global level. And this was a really exciting opportunity. What we have found really exciting about the partnership with Gallup and the use of the Gallup World Poll, I, I would say are two key things that I think for me are, are, really, are really exciting. Firstly, people do talk a lot about global surveys, but this is truly global. They often talk about 50 or 60 countries. This is over 100 countries. We did over 140 in the first wave um, and about and 113 in, in the second. So really exciting there. But also what was really exciting for us is that the Gallup World Poll is a pre-existing survey that Gallup runs that covers a range of issues around people's lives, how they feel um, in terms of quality of life, political participation, um, financial status, economic, et cetera. So what was really great about the World Cup Global Monitor is that we could look at people's, how people's views about science fitted into the broad issues of their life. Uh, one thing that we make very clear is that science doesn't exist in a silo. It doesn't exist on its own. It's very much part of a society. And I feel that this data set really shows that. Um, just to give you a very kind of brief overview of, of the kind of key themes within, within the Global Monitor. Um, when we first commissioned it in, in 2018, we decided that there would be kind of two components to this. Uh, one is, is the core component, which is around attitudes to science, um, how much people think they know about science, what they think they understand, and of course, trust in science and scientists. And then, and that's part of the core module, which we have in both the 2018 and 2020 survey. In 2018, we had a focus on vaccines, which got a huge amount of publicity, uh, especially around the debate. And this was pre-COVID in terms of vaccine skepticism. So we were asking people around the world how, how safe they felt or effective and useful vaccines were. So that was the main um, component for 28, main module for 2018. But then in 2020, we had a focus um, on our key priority area of mental health. One thing it's worth saying is obviously we had a decision to make with COVID whilst the survey is normally done as a combination of face-to-face -face and phone because of the pandemic, obviously we can do it face-to-face. -face. We had a debate whether, whether to do the survey. In the end, I believe we made the right decision, which is we went ahead and did it, but it was all done by phone. But also it's worth noting that we did add in some questions um, around COVID, around how much they think that, uh, how much they trust the science and people communicating the science around COVID, um, supports for global cooperation of countries and tackling future pandemics. Um, and we also purchased um, a data from Gallup, questions they also asked, which asked people about the impact of the pandemic on their lives and whether they would take 
a COVID vaccine. And just to emphasize that question about the vaccine was mainly asked before the first vaccines were announced. So we've got a really fantastic um, coverage here on attitudes of science um, issues. And, and I, I would say that I'm actually quite envious of you because I've been running the survey to rotating. I haven't really had that great opportunity to really gorge into the data, but there is plenty there. Please, uh, you know, familiarize yourself with it. It covers a lot of dimensions um, and, and goes quite deep in terms of, of geographies. So uh, wishing you all the best of luck, really, really enjoy it. And finally, I just want to really say um, a massive thank you to Cabby uh, for doing this and, and for being so flexible because originally, you know, we had to pivot to doing face to face. You've been absolutely fantastic in pivoting and, and bringing it to this day that I'm extremely excited about. So, so thank you to you and, and to the hackathon participants. Thank you. Thank you, Aitam. Um, so we'll now follow uh, with a talk from Beatrice. Um, so Beatrice, I'm going to stop sharing and I've given you um, co-host rights, so you should be able to share your screen. So Beatrice is going to walk us through um, the data that will be put. So the data is not on your team's page currently, but very shortly after this launch event today, it will be deposited onto your page. Um, so I will just stop sharing. Right. And thank you, Beatrice, over to you. Thank you, Tom. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to share my screen now. Um, are you sure I can share my screen, Tom? Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, I've yeah I've made you the host, Beatrice, and okay. then we'll just swap back. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, um, I'm just going to uh, give you a couple of pointers to about um, what the data set includes and the material that we're going to provide you um, that should be useful um, to guide you through the hackathon. So these files is uh, what you will receive in the Teams file page, um, I'm assuming. And uh, so in this folder, you will be able to find all the questionnaires. So the 2018 questionnaire, the 2020 questionnaire and the WGM methodologies from 2018 and 2020. This is just in case you need it, the question, the data itself does not report the whole question wording. So in case um, you need to see what exactly the question was, you can look up in here. Um, the main file is this one, which is in SPSS format, but we also provide you with uh, a CSV format and a text version. So all the data has um, labels. So I'm not sure how um, expert you are in, in SPSS, but I saw that some people probably has used it, have used it before. Um, but in SPSS, we can see the variable name here, the variable label, and then the value labels. So the Excel text format will show the labels and not the actual um, value that the variable is taking. Um, but the SPSS will include both of them. Um, so the first thing to note is that we are including two waves in this data set that are identified by this variable wave. Um, the wave takes a number that is uh, kind of internal, we use it at Gallup, but if you need to use um, the time variable, um, I would suggest to use, sorry. Um, year wave. Uh, so this variable will give you the year of the wave that we are looking at, um, because the wave will be like, 13.10 and 15.20, so it doesn't really give any idea. I mean, you can say that one comes before and one after, but it doesn't really identify the exact, the exact year that we're referring to. Um, another thing to notice is we have, oops, we have two different weights. Um, it's very important to use weights so every time 
uh, you're making a calculation or uh, you're looking at a statistics, um, obviously you need to weight the data. Um, we used two weights because one um, needs to be used when we're comparing, we're using global statistics. So we're comparing um, a lot of countries together or um, sub regions. So if you're looking at Africa and like each country within Africa or other sub regions, you always need to use project weight. This weight takes in account the population of each country. And so it will weight that the data of a country depending on how big the country is. Uh, so for instance, China will have a much bigger weight than the Netherlands. Um, you can use this other weight, which is the normal way, let's say. It doesn't take in account the population of a country, but it only takes in account demographics. Um, and you can use this if you're looking at just one country. So if you're just filtering by the Netherlands, uh, then you can just wait by the normal WHT. Um, another important thing. So there's a list of variables that were not um, of the Welcome Global Monitor, but just Gallup variables. And you can find the, um, the explanation for these variables in the data dictionary. Um, and there is a bit of explanation about the few indices that we included that are also not included in the Welcome Global Monitor um, that you can find the explanation of in the Whirlpool methodology. Um, and also another important thing to keep in mind is that we did not survey in exactly the same country in 2018 and in 2020. Um, so we included two variables that are called match 2020 and match 2018. Um, if you are analyzing a question that was based in 2018 and also surveyed in 2020, but you want to use as like a base year 2018, then you should filter by match 2018. Well, if you want to look at a question that belongs to 2020 and was also surveyed in 2018, um, you should filter by this uh, match 2020. Um, there were a few questions as well that were very similar in the two years um, and that have been trended, sorry. Um, I'm just looking at a little bit explanation. Maybe I can just show you in here. Um, so one is WP. Ah, oh, yeah. So these two variables, they have been included as. Oops, Sorry, just one second. So here, um, they've been included as WP20002 and WP21081. Um, they were they were slightly different in 2018 and 2020, but they were similar enough that we thought of trending them together and making them into one variable. So you can just either ignore these two variables that have been included in the data set anyways, and just use this one. Um, but if you want to look at the test at the text in the questionnaire, uh, you can refer to these codes, these variables codes. And uh, the same is true for this variable. Um, there were two other variables that are called uh, W4. So these questions, um, you can find all the information in here, but I just wanted to give you, um, just make you notice this. Um, they were asked, in both years, but the responses scale differed. 
So, oh my God. Sorry. So in um, in 2020, the responses scale was uh, divided into a lot, a little, and not at all. While in 2018, it was just a response of yes and no. So we didn't trend them, but we're just signaling you the possibility of trending them because they're similar enough and um, it can be up to you what to like how to trend it as in you can either decide that like a lot and a little classify as yes or only a lot classifies as yes. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was uh, it could be useful to to know that. So these two are um, W4. again sorry this DSS sometimes is not very cooperative for yeah and w9 on this one so it will say in the value label what you can trend it with and i think that's all is there any questions um beatrice um could i just ask um so for so currently the participants are seeing the data if they were to view it in SPSS. And um, if they view it in Excel, they will only see the codes, aren't they? Like W1, W4. So could you just please show the participants the data dictionary, just so they, yeah. they know to be able to refer to that if they're own, if so, they're using Excel? Yeah, so um the data dictionary is in Excel. And the metadata page will show um the variable name which is the code that you find in spss and what it means in the in column c which is called label um there is in this um in this tab uh we can see not just the label but also the values that the variable can take and the value labels so whatever question well so <laughs> this wp5 um is a list of countries so uh, you can use uh, this as a, just as a reference, but there is also another variable that is called country new that shows you the actual country names, um, which is in a string. So you can just see the country name in the data. Um, but yeah, this is the data dictionary. Every information that is contained in the SPSS will be in here. Yeah, so, so if participants are not using the SPSS file and instead analyze it in, say, Python or R, yeah. um, they can go to this data dictionary to find the information they need to understand the data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's a long list, but everything is in here. Um, so I wonder, it might be worth, actually, if we open the Q&A now, but it might be worth um, continuing to share your screen, Beatrice, so that if um, any of the questions are like specific, that we can show the participants on your screen. Um, Eitan, I see you've unmuted. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so just a, just a very quick comment as well, just people to be aware not to be shocked or something, but, you know, in certain ways, there were questions that couldn't be asked in, in certain countries, they wouldn't allow it. So if you see missing data for that, you know, that's potentially an explanation. And also to be aware that for some questions you should be able to figure out they were filtered questions so for example we asked a question about people's awareness of climate change only those people who heard of climate change were then asked subsequent questions about that so just to be aware of that um if you're surprised by you know missing missing data in some of the variables and if you have any doubts about any of the missing data you can always see in the questionnaire which questions were filtered or not um but yeah normally if a question is missing it's because of that um so maybe if we now if any participants have any questions about the data or the welcome global monitor um please feel free to ask those now you can either post those in the chat um or feel free to unmute and ask them um beatrice if you can continue sharing your screen that would be great um and we have had one question uh, which isn't necessarily related to the data so i'll just answer that now while people are thinking 
Um, it's um, could you specify research question or tell us what is expected from us? Um, so all the key information I'm going to provide in the next part of this launch event. So uh, I'll be able to answer that question and then with the slides we have together, but um, I, that I've put together. But um, if uh, yeah, there's any questions about the data or what Beatrice has just gone through, uh, please feel free to ask those now. So I'll just give you a minute to think about that. And out of interest, Beatrice, while we're waiting, do you happen to have um, the Excel version of the data open just so we can show the participants what um, it looks like? I have it here. Mm. I don't have it open, but I can open it. If it doesn't take too long. Mm. Um, so we've had a question that's about what about um, data from 2019 only? Um, Eitan or Beatrice, would you like to answer that? So um, the Global Monitor was only surveyed in 2018 and 2020. We did not survey 2019. Um, yeah, we have a couple of data points that were asked, I think, in January 2019, but they still are part of the 2018 wave. Um, so if you look at field date, so this variable here, you will see that a few interviews have been carried out in January 2019, but yeah, they're still classified as 2018 waves. So. And another question that we've had is, is it possible to analyze the data using Python? Yeah, of course. Uh, you can you can import the, well, the Excel file that I'm trying to open now, hmm. which it doesn't seem like it's working. Yeah, I can, um, I can see I can see the bar <laughs> at the bottom of your screen. It's slow, yeah, slowly making its I think, I think it's just worth, worth mentioning that these are absolutely huge files. Yeah. Um, and they will take a long time. That too. Yeah, they are quite big. Uh, but yeah, definitely, you can use whatever software or, or mean that you prefer to analyze the data. Um, you don't have to use SPSS or, or Excel, um, whichever you prefer works. So the data, so the data has been provided in different formats to give you complete flexibility of what tool you would like to use to analyze it. But the actual data itself is the same in all of them, I think is worth uh, making clear. Um, so uh, another question we've had is, is there any limit to the period within which we can pick any other data to support this analysis? i.e. not data before 2018. Um, Eitan, would you be able to answer that question possibly? Sorry, uh, I, I'm not sure if I've only understood, but, but the, you, you can only use the, the data that's there, which would be from the field work period of 2018 um, and 2020. That um, I think this question relates to if they enrich the data with data yeah, from with other sources. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. please do. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, we very much welcome you uh, importing any kind of administrative, administrative data you want, but just be aware to make sure that they're from a, a pretty much similar time period to the field work. So that's definitely something that in the um, presentations at the closing event, these are the type of things to be made aware of, aren't they? If other data has been brought in, um, how do they relate to each other on time periods and being very clear of maybe the possible limitations of your analysis or what what that you know how that affects your conclusions as well and um, thank you Eitan. and also something that maybe should be worth specifying um this is not a panel analysis so we did not survey the same people in 2018 and in 2020 just in case anyone might think of doing a regression that like a yeah in, in a pan using a panel um analysis that did, would not work so it's different people surveyed in 2018 and 2020. Um, so we've had another question. Uh, what kind of results is expected from the analysis done? Um, visualization, a dashboard. Uh, so I can answer that. And um, so uh, one of the slides that we'll show later today um, has the success criteria um, that your presentation uh, at the end of the hackathon will be judged against. So that will give you an indication um, of the types of things we're looking for when judging uh, the, hack the hacks that the groups present. Um, in terms of the, the actual format, so whether it's a dashboard visualization, um, you'll see on a slide later that we're actually quite flexible with how you want to submit your presentation. Um, but we'll, we'll come back to that uh, later today. Thank you. Uh, Beatrice, is, the, is this the data you have in front of you now? Yes. Um, I was just checking it. I think it didn't open. 
but so yeah, this is a CSV data that you can use to import in any platform or any software that you might want to use to analyze it. Um, and so would it be possible just to show the participants the kind of key difference at the top? So how the columns uh, uh, that they have codes rather than the questions, because then it will be, you know, it, it, so we have these codes at the top, don't we? Would you like to just explain that, Beatrice? Thank you. Uh, you mean these codes? Yeah. So if if so, if someone opens this file and they see these codes, um, where do they so, find out what what those mean? Yeah, these are the the the, the question names, the variable names, mm. um, and the data dictionary will provide the explanation of. So this list corresponds to this list. Um, and yeah, the, this data dictionary Excel for Manhattan, um, in particular, these two tabs, var labels and metadata. The metadata just provides an explanation of each variable name and label, and this the var labels, var mean, meaning variable, will show um, each. So for instance, like, what is this two? What does it mean for this variable name in particular? So, for instance, 10202, I can just. Two, two. This is a great example. Thank you, Beatrice. Let's find it. Yeah. And this is what the variable means. Employ it for self. But obviously, again, this, if you need to understand better what the question is, you can look in the questionnaire. And these are the options. Um, and this is what they mean. So that two meant no in this case. So if participants uh, analyze it in SPSS, all that information is there in the one file that Beatrice showed at the beginning. But if you instead say use Python or R and you're using the CSV file, uh, then you'll need to cross check with the data dictionary to be able to understand what you, the columns refer to. You can probably just import the labels in Python like this. I mean, mm. I, I, I wouldn't say that you need to cross check them manually, but uh, there is, a, at least in R, there is a way to import labels. Yeah. So. Um, are there any other questions at all? Just give everyone a moment to think if they've got any other questions. So can I can just make a comment. I think there's also a document that shows the Gallup World Poll the codebook methodology. Yeah, of, this one. Yeah, but that just defines how some of those variables were put together because Gallup uses quite a few composite variables. It uses yeah, mainly the indices and um, income. There is a few different income classifications. So I think one to seven. So you will find all the information about that in here. Um, Aitam, please, could you just clarify what you mean by a composite variable, please? So yeah, um, a composite variable is a very Beatrice, correct me if I'm wrong. That's based on a, a, a putting together of other variables. So for example, Gallup yeah. has got an index called a community attachment index. And that's based on responses to a, num a, a few questions around that. Um, and that creates an index that goes, I believe from one to a hundred, I guess a hundred people feeling most attachment to their community, but it's done by adding a few variables together so those kind of things will all be um, clearly defined in that document. In the methodology. Well, if there are no further questions, a uh, huge thank you to Eitan and Beatrice uh, for that. Oh, hang on, there is a question. Um, uh, so the question is about missing values. Is there any specific way that we can follow that we can follow, can you tell us or have, or we have to decide? Um, so there is, there shouldn't be missing values in general because um, most questions, I mean, if they are missing, as in the question is empty, it means that either the question was filtered so they could not ask that question to that person or the question would not asked in that country in particular because of other reasons, because the country didn't allow it or, um, well, maybe because of this. Um, otherwise, there won't be missing values. You can decide to set uh, the don't know and refuse options as missing values if you think that those are not interesting to look at. 
um, and this is all outlined here. So like in particular, like in this in this example, 98 and 99, they um, they're qualified as non refused. You can decide to keep them in, so they're still gonna be values in the in in the question, or you can set them at missing values. That really depends on you. So, so a good example of that might be what Eitan said earlier on the climate change questions. So um, Eitan, would they be blank if the, so if the person didn't know about climate change, the kind of subsequent questions would be, be, be blank? It, it would be, it would be blank, a blank cell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. Um, Beatrice, could I please ask you uh, to make me host again and then I can continue sharing? Um, yeah, sure. Um, and while I'm, while we're doing that, another question is, uh, oh, so we have, sorry, actually, we've just had, we have got time for this as well. Uh, we've had another question about going back over the projection weights. Uh, so could, Beatrice, sorry, could you please share your screen again and just show the, the uh, pro WT variable again, please? I just made you host, I don't think I can Oh, sorry, I, I will make, I will or maybe make I can actually, again. let me see. Share. Can you see it? Maybe. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, sorry, what was the question? Um, so could you go over the weights again, please? So there's the, is it pro WT? So, is, is that yeah, available? I think it's pro P R O J W T. Mm. Let me just double check it. So if we could maybe yeah. just go over again, the difference between projection weight and the weight one, a few uh, rows below. Yes. Um, in general, I would use projection weight because projection weight takes in account the demos and the country populations. So it means that bigger countries will have a bigger weight than smaller countries. Um, it is important when we're comparing, uh, when we're making global statistics or comparing different countries within a region, for instance. But if we are looking at just one particular country, so if you want to look at Algeria, for instance, and you filter that out, then you can use WGT. So WGT um, is the, the, the canonical weight that takes in account demos. So like education, gender, um, what else is there? Like the regional distribution of the population. Um, so like if we interviewed too many people from one region and too less from another region, that's gonna be weighted. Um, so yeah, just like the, the normal statistical weight. And what was the other question? Um, and it was about the match 2020 and the match 2018. Oh, well, yeah. So the problem is because of, I, I think because mainly COVID, uh, we could not survey this, the exact same countries in 2018 and in 2020. Um, and so for, there are some questions that were asked both years, but if you want to analyze, if you want to start from a 2020 perspective, you should remove the countries that were not surveyed in 2020 that we have in 2018. So you should filter by this variable. So this variable is just zeros and ones. And it just means match 2020 means you only take um, countries that were surveyed in 2020 and the same countries in 2018, but removing the countries that were only surveyed in 2018. And MESH 2018 is the same thing, but for 2018. So removing, there's, I think, a couple of countries that were surveyed in 2020, but not in 2018. Um, so if you want to base your analysis on 2018 for some reason, um, then you should filter by MESH 2018. Clear. Um, so Beatrice, just to check, so the ones and zeros then, if it's a one, does that mean that, uh, yes, like it was in 2018? Or yeah, news? yeah. So the filter will, um, in, in well, in SP, this works for SPSS, but I mean, even in, in, in Excel, if you want to filter it, then if you filter by match 2020, you would remove the blanks and only use the ones and same here. I was just trying to look for because it's just a missing value, so it's just going to be a dot. I cannot really mm. look for one right now. Maybe. Mm. 
no, but I don't think so because they're not in that order. I can show you maybe. Yeah, I'll see it. Um, this is March 2020. Actually, I think this something went wrong with this row here. The IET. We probably need to repost the, the CSV file. But yeah, so these CSVs. Yeah, so you can see these are the countries that, for instance, were not included in 2020. So the, so the zero there in that column would mean that they weren't included in 2020. Yeah, and the one yeah, is that they were. Exactly. Thank you. Um, um, great, okay. Um, so in the interest of time, if um, Beatrice, if you could please stop sharing your screen, then I'll go back to the presentation. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Sure. Okay, so yes, so a huge, a huge thank you again to Etan and Beatrice for uh, your talks. Um, okay, so we're now moving on to key information about the event. So the first thing is the timeline. So today is the 1st of December and we're at the launch event. So this is where the data is going to be provided to the group. So like I said, it's not in the Teams page currently, uh, but shortly after this event, it will be deposited into your Teams page. Um, and they will look exactly the same as what Beatrice was um, just going through. Um, and then uh, the launch event, we're providing all the key information uh, for you to begin uh, the hackathon. Um, between the 1st and the 16th of December is the kind of where you're actively hacking. Um, and that's where we'd expect 10 hours of independent work per person. Um, in that period, uh, there's opportunities to check in with your facilitator and uh, like I said, we'll go through in a little bit, a, li a little bit later, uh, the role of the facilitator. Um, the submission deadline uh, for your hack is on the 16th um, of December, and the deadline is noon Kenyan time. I've highlighted that in yellow because in some previous communications, we said it would be midnight. Uh, we've brought it um, forward a little bit, um, so it's now noon um, on the 16th. And so each group will give a 10 minute presentation uh, on their analyses and like I said we'll go through that in a bit more detail uh, later today and then on uh, and then on the 17th is when those presentations uh, will be given uh, on zoom uh, so this is the timeline and um, so that actual hacking is from today to the 16th of December and um, so success criteria what what is it that we're looking for um, in your hacks so the first thing is that the hack must focus on one of the following themes. And that's because of the themes that are in the Welcome Global Monitor data. Um, trust and perceptions of science are in the middle. Uh, that's because that is the core theme that uh, your hack uh, needs to follow. And then the others are sub themes uh, that around that. So we've got data on vaccination, uh, we've got data on mental health, data on climate change and on coronavirus. So feel free, uh, you know, whichever one you would prefer to explore or even combining the themes together, you know, feel free to be creative here, but just bear in mind that you need, it needs to always link back to trust and perceptions of science, of which there is also uh, lots of data on that in the Welcome Global Monitor too. Um, as you've said, uh, the, a core component of your hack needs to be the 2018 and or 2020 Welcome Global Monitors, which we've just gone through the data. Um, how do you know what is the Welcome Global Monitor versus what is uh, the Gallup World Poll data? So we've said previously that there's also Gallup World Poll data. In the data dictionary, um, the cells that are highlighted in yellow are the Welcome Global Monitor data. The cells that are not highlighted are from the Gallup World Poll. So basically what that means is the data in yellow, you need to ensure that that data in yellow is a core component of your hack. And um, if any of that um, is not clear, please feel free to put a question um, in the chat and uh, we can come back to that. But if you go to the file that is at the top, this uh, data dictionary Excel, 
in the metadata tab, which Beatrice showed, you will have seen on her screen that some of the um, rows were highlighted in yellow. That is the Welcome Global Monitor data. Um, as we've said previously with our communications, um, the hack uh, will focus on da um, analyzing data from a local or a regional perspective in Africa. And that's to ensure that um, your efforts are not just duplicating uh, reports that have already been published. So uh, that is also key, uh, a key success criteria for this hack. Um, and this is what you'll be judged against uh, on the closing event on the 17th of December. So uh, there are four key judging criteria and the percentages are how much uh, the, you know, they weight towards the judging. So the big 40% one are the policy implications and recommendations for future research. And here we mean policy um, in a, a broad sense. So not just governmental policy, but you know, engaging insights that, um, you know, that fund, funders, uh, science communicators, et cetera, uh, will be able to engage with and draw um, insightful information from. Um, the other three, we have a creative use of data, um, technical rigor, um, and impactful storytelling and clarity of presentation. Um, so um, I will just stop for a second and see if there's any questions um, around this. If you do have any questions uh, specifically on this judging criteria, uh, please feel free to post them um, in the chat now and I can answer those questions. So I'll just uh, give you a little bit of time for that. Um, and then the, the um, text next to the bullet points are the key criteria that the judges uh, will be looking for um, on the 17th of December. So I'll just, I'll just give you a moment if there's any questions. No, okay, well, I, I will continue and I'll come back if there's any questions. But yes, so um, we will put this um, on your team's page as well. So you can always uh, remind yourself of what it is that you're being judged against um, for your hack. Um, and also just to say, when I went through the themes earlier, so I'm going to just go back slightly because of the question we had on, the re on research questions. Um, we don't want to be prescriptive and tell you what you should or shouldn't research. Um, all we ask is that you must stick within these themes. But beyond that, uh, feel, uh, you know, be as creative um, as possible. And I see there is a chat, a question in the chat. Uh, before we engage in individual hacking, do we first agree as a group of our focus area? Um, yes. So the group will submit a single presentation. So, uh, you know, the hack is all about working collaboratively with your team. Um, so certainly you need to agree as a team first. Um, what it is that you're exploring, uh, what themes you're going to explore, what your research questions are, um, how, how, you know, who, who um, will do which bits maybe. Uh, yeah, that's very much the collaborative effort of our working as a team. Um, and someone has asked, uh, can you brief a bit on the third? So I presume that is the third success criteria. So I can do that. Uh, so I, I guess that's the technical rigor question. So we'll be looking for uh, the different statistical methods that have been used uh, or analytical methods, are they appropriate for the analysis you've done? So Eitan and Beatrice talked earlier about, say, the weights variable and how that's important because of like different sizes of different countries. So that's an aspect of technical rigor there to ensure that the analysis is statistically correct. And um, Beatrice also mentioned that it's not the same people that have been surveyed in 2018 and 2020. So the types of methods that you might use to analyze that data might differ than if it was the same person. So we'll be looking at the methods uh, that you've used. Oh, more chats are coming through. Um, so one question is, will we add the presentation to the Teams page? We certainly will. So you will have all this information available to you. And the recording, um, it may take a couple of days to go online, but the recording will be posted on sidev.net. Um, and that will be publicly available for you to see. We just need a little bit of time to get the upload on there. Um, and then someone has asked, can a, work, can a team work on two or more themes? Certainly, um, you know, that's very much up to you and your team to decide. Uh, like we said, we, we don't want to kind of stifle your creativity. Uh, feel free to pursue what is of interest um, to you. And these are kinds of conversations that you can have with your facilitator as well. Um, so. 
One of the criteria is around um, creative analysis. So one opportunity that you might have here is to enrich the Welcome Global Monitor data with data from other sources. You know, that would maybe be a tick against creative um, analysis. Um, it's not a requirement, but um, we very much encourage that if you would like to enrich the data uh, with, from data from other sources, please feel free to. Um, on this uh, slide are some of the sources of where um, you know, relevant data could be sourced from uh, to allow you to do the kind of creative analyses that you decide that you wish to pursue. Um, we have put together um, some data sets for you and a data log effectively in Excel that will allow you to download uh, relevant data sets. Um, so we've done some of the work for you there, but certainly feel free if there's other sources where you would like to extract data you know, for your analysis, then certainly feel free to. But it is not a requirement. You don't have to um, use data from other sources as well. But it's encouraged for creative analysis. Um, and finally, to be a successful team, uh, two things you will need is time management and collaboration. So we need to be, we need to be realistic with the time you have. Uh, the submission deadline is noon on the 16th of December. Um, so making sure that you submit your presentation on time and then collaboration. So like the question we just had around, um, you know, do we need to decide as a team first? Yes, because the team will submit only one hack to be judged. So we need that collaboration, uh, checking in with your facilitator to make sure things are going well, helping each other out and being constructive. Um, so the facilitators, so like I said before, we have 41 participants that are spread across eight groups and we have four dedicated facilitators. So Eitan is going to be the facilitator for groups one and two, um, Hilda for groups three and four, myself for groups five and six, and O Cheng for group seven and eight. So uh, be aware um, that, um, I'm sorry, I've just had to just check if the question's related to, um, uh, so the question, how do we know who is in which group? Um, I, I will come back to that um, in, a, in a moment. Um, so across the four facilitators, uh, one thing to be aware of is please that we ask um, in different time zones. So Eitan and myself are in the UK and Hilda and Ocheng are in um, Kenya. So what we've posted on this slide are the kind of general times where we expect that we will be available to answer your questions. Uh, but just please be patient with us as well as we may not be able to respond immediately due to other um, you know, commitments that we have. Um, um, and then in terms of drop-in sessions, so between now and the 16th, there's an opportunity to have drop-in sessions with your facilitator where you can discuss the work you've been doing and the facilitator can check in with you um, they'll be arranged directly between your, the facilitator and the group. Um, so we expect some communication there. And what I'm going to do after this event, each facilitator has been invited to your team's page, but I will also connect you uh, through email as well. And then you have like different routes of communication. Um, so what is the facilitator's role? Well, you can always rely on your facilitator to guide the conversation in a direction that is meaningful for the entire group. Um, they can ask leading questions or provide assistance with understanding the content of the data. Um, so for example, like what Beatrice was showing us earlier, where we were going through what the, the, the structure of the data, what the different variables referred to and how you understand what say a code means in terms of the question that was asked and uh, that kind of support we certainly can provide um, and they will be there to help keep the group on track uh, to um, for the hack so you know checking that you are working against the success criteria that the themes that you're working with fit with uh, what our expectation is uh, and um, and other things related to that and um, Understandably as well, uh, there might be some differences within your group over the next two weeks. Um, so your facilitator is there to help ensure that everyone's opinion is heard and that differences are solved amicably. However, it's important to go through what the role of the facilitator is not. So the facilitator is not there to answer all questions that you might have around the discussion and your analysis. Um, your facilitator is not there to provide technical assistance. So we, we will not be able to show you how to code um, what tell, like help you with what statistical techniques you might use to analyze the data or you know ask the questions that you're interested in or what tools to use either and um, this is very much participant led um, so the facilitator's role will not be to provide technical support um, 
Your facilitator um, will not tell you what analyses that you should do. This is a collaborative effort with the rest of the group uh, for you to come to a, a group decision. Um, and the facilitator will not be able to pick sides really in that discussion between the group. Um, and finally, the facilitator will not be able to so likely be able to solve every problem that you encounter during your discussion. Um, so we just want to make sure that everyone's aware of what the role of the facilitator is and what the role of the facilitator isn't. And certainly, you know, there's a, we're expecting a lot of collaborative effort here between the participants in a particular group. Um, so how do you communicate with each other? Well, um, everyone's been invited to Teams. So everyone has a dedicated Teams page for their group. So for example, in the circle here is group one. Um, so I can see all of the groups here because I'm an administrator. Uh, you will not be able to see every group like in the image shown. Uh, this group is private and it's for you to be able to communicate and work collaboratively specifically in your group. Um, and like I said earlier, if you do have trouble accessing Teams, uh, please feel free to email me and I can try and sort that out for you. Um, when you click onto your group, it will look something like this. Um, so you can see that in group one, um, I posted saying hello to everyone and explaining uh, the, the group. And then we've had a couple of replies, which I've blurred out, but we can see that, you know, participants are engaging. Um, and then we can see this new conversation um, tab at the bottom. So this is where the participants can engage with each other and communicate. Um, if you click the files tab at the top, um, this is where the data will be deposited um, later today, and it's where that you can work collaboratively. So you can save, uh, you know, the different analyses that you're doing, um, and that, that's kind of a, a shared space uh, where you can work together. Um, there's some other um, uh, Teams pages you've been invited to as well. So this Teams page called Welcome 2021 Virtual Hackathon, uh, there's three channels in here, and these are all public. Um, so in general is where you can uh, introduce yourself, and I see a lot of participants have done that already. It's really great to see everyone uh, introducing themselves to the wider group. Um, there's a tab, uh, a channel, sorry, for networking, and there's also a channel uh, for tools and methods. So for example, whilst it's not the facilitator's role to provide technical support, certainly feel free to reach out to other participants in other groups. And um, if you feel that you're able to offer support um, to others, you know, that they, they are the channels where you're able to communicate and help each other. So we really encourage that. Um, and I posted in both of those earlier today to give some guidance on, on what the purpose of those channels were. Um, what do you do for the closing events? Well, on the 16th, uh, by noon on the um, Kenyan time, uh, you need to save uh, your presentation for the event um, on the 17th. Uh, you have a dedicated folder for that on Teams. So if you go onto files, you'll see a folder called Final Group Presentation. So you need to ensure that whatever in presentation you intend to give, that it is saved in that folder by noon on the 16th of December. In terms of the file format, uh, we're very open to feedback on this. You know, you may wish to submit it as a PowerPoint presentation. You know, you may wish to save it in some other format as well. So, you know, over the next two weeks, we are very open to receive feedback on that um, and you know facilitators can work with their groups to uh, you know work out what's best for the group but just whatever it is it needs to be saved in that folder by noon on the 16th so then on the closing event what is the agenda for that so in the first session is where the groups will present their hacks so every group will have 10 minutes to present their hack to everyone else and that will be followed by q a so that will run from 10 a.m. till 12.15 Kenyan time. Um, there will then be a break for an hour. Uh, during that break is when the judges will deliberate on who um, had, the, you know, had the best hack. And then we will come back uh, at 1.15 Kenyan time where the judging uh, decision will be announced and the, uh, group, the winning group will be awarded uh, their prize. Um, and judges will be revealed at the closing event on the 17th. So finally, um, some frequently asked questions before we go into the Q&A. So how do I get started? Um, talk with your group members. Uh, so you've all been invited onto the Teams page so you can communicate there. Um, as I said, I'm going to connect all the facilitators to their groups over email as well. So you have two different routes of communication there. Um, and reach out to your facilitator. Um, what do the column names refer to in the Welcome Global Monitor and um, data? So we went through that previously. So check the data dictionary and you'll be able to see what code 
refers to which question. Um, how do I use specific tools? Um, so like I said, this isn't um, a role of the facilitator to um, help with this. So either reach out to your group members um, or um, post in the tools and methods teams page uh, to uh, get help from other participants. And we're really hoping for a lot of collaborative effort here. You know, if you see a question that you feel that you're able to respond, you know, uh, please help. And, you know, we can all collaborate here and learn from each other. Um, what method should I use to analyze the data? And the answer is the same as question three. Um, and finally, um, if you have any other queries, um, please feel free to email Calvin. I, you'll have been in communication with Calvin already. So yeah, Calvin is your go-to if you have any other queries. Um, so with that, um, we can now move on to the Q&A. So I see there's actually quite a lot of questions uh, in the chat already. So let me uh, see what has been posted. Um, if you have a question as well, please feel free to unmute and ask it. Oh, I can see we have a question already. Yes, uh, Mary, uh, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Okay, um, thank you for the nice presentation. Um, I have two questions. Um, is there an opportunity to write and publish a paper, let's say out of this analysis in future? And secondly, can we compare 2018 and 2020 data in that, let's say we are trying to compare country by country climate change, um, in one region, let's say between the two years, is that allowed? We have to sort of work on this separately. Thank you. Um, so for the publication question, um, I wonder if Eitan, are you, are you the best person to answer that given it's welcome data? Yeah, yeah look, we, I do, we have no issue with that at all because um, all uh, the, the global monitor data there is, is for open access, anyone can use it, so we don't have any issue with that. Beatrice, correct me if I'm wrong, but with the Gallup World Poll data, there, there's no problem with, with publishing outputs from it. Is, is that right? Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, that's also completely fine. Yeah, it's no problem there. And then, sorry, Mary, could you just ask the, the yeah. second question again, please, around climate change? Oh, you're on mute, Mary. Apologies. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, let's say we want to compare country by country, let's say in uh, Afro region. Uh, uh, on climate change, are we allowed to sort of compare between the 2018 situation on the during the Welcome Global Monitor and the 2020 situation? Like, sort of compare the two? Yeah, definitely. Um, you can compare the results just to keep in mind that it's not uh, an evolution of like because we did not ask the same question to the same people. But if the question is present in 2018 and it is present in 2020, then definitely the question, like it is representative of the country population. It's not representative of one person's opinion changing. So yeah. you can definitely see the evolution of, of like what people in a country think or in a region think um, and compare those, yes. But yeah, just be aware because unfortunately we didn't ask the climate change question in 2018, so you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, so that's why that's why I said like if the same question was asked in in both years, definitely. Um, if a question is not present in 2018, then obviously it's not possible to compare. It. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And um, so I'm looking at the chat, so I can see a couple of questions. So firstly. Um, how do we know who is in which group? So there's a couple of options there. Um, on Teams, if you click the little info tab, it will tell you who else is in that group with you. However, like I said earlier, um, I'm going to um, connect facilitators and their group um, over email. So you'll very shortly get an email that has all your group in that email as well. So you will know that way. Um, so we've had another question. Um, I understand the hack as group working, nothing individual, am I right? So we expect each participant to contribute 10 hours of work towards this hackathon. Um, so each person is contributing 10 hours, but you're working collaboratively to provide one final presentation. Um, so hopefully that clarifies things, but just let me know if you need any more um, info on that. Um, Um, yeah, so around uh, discussion, yeah, so discuss uh, discuss with your team or group, and then from that discussion, uh, you'll then be able to work collaboratively as a group on, on what the analysis is that you're doing and what you're investigating. Uh, uh, so no, um, the themes are not assigned to groups. 
um, you are you have the creative freedom to get, look into any of the themes that um, interest you. Um, Um, yeah, so uh, there's a question around other sources of data with respect to the themes. So, like I said, the Welcome Global Monitor needs to be the, a core component of the hack, and trust and perceptions in science needs to be a core theme. But you can add in other data from other sources, you know, depending on what questions interest you. And, you know, when, when you start thinking of the types of questions you might ask, you might think, oh, to ask this question, I might need this type of data that isn't in the welcome global monitor and that's where you can start bringing in data from other sources so we have produced a list of sources that could be of interest to you or maybe they are not and it really depends on what questions uh, your group yourself and your group decide to investigate and um, so it's, it's really up to the group really to lead that we've just posted some um some data sets that could be of interest to you uh, if you enrich the data um, are there any other questions? I, that's everything in the chat so far. So if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to post them in the chat or uh, unmute and ask them uh, here. I'll stop sharing as well. Um... Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes, just to confirm, have the groups been allocated? Yes. So um, you will have received an email um, from Microsoft Teams that um, invites you to your group. So the groups are numbered from one to eight. Um, so you'll have had an email that says something like, um, you've been invited to join group four. Um, you know, click here to join that team. Um, but like I said, I, I will follow up over email as well, so you have another means of communication. But um, after this um, launch event, one thing that would be really useful is if all participants um, download Microsoft Teams, if you haven't already, uh, and set yourself up on Teams so that you can uh, use that as a way to engage with your group and the other participants. Okay, thank you. Any other questions at all? Um, if there are no other questions, I just want to um, offer the floor to Eitan, Beatrice or Ben, if there's anything you want to add from the presentation that I've just given, um, if there's just anything that you think um, uh, the participants should be aware of. So the only thing I was going to add, uh, just, just to be aware, is that um, within Africa, the mode of survey would have, would have changed entirely, I believe, Beatrice. I think all the African countries were done face to face in 2018 and moved to 2020. Um, so there may have been a mode effect in terms of comparing responses. However, we don't know what the nature of that effect is. Um, if that's something that is interests you or of concern when you're comparing the 2018 and 2020 findings, I would encourage you to look at the Global Monitor COVID report in the appendix, where we give a very detailed um, analysis of, of what kind of effects there might have been as a result of the change of mode. Um, Eitan, so could you just please clarify what change of mode refers to, please? Oh, I apologize, sorry. So change of mode, we mean the mode of administering the survey. So going from um, a face-to-face -to, -face to a telephone interview, which may have had an impact on the kinds of responses that people give. This is something that's hugely uh, documented within research about whether it makes people more positive than they might have been or more negative. Um, we have some discussions about it, as I say, but it, it's, I won't go into technical detail, but it's impossible to know what the exact impact of it is. Um, so if that's something of interest to you, uh, do look at that appendix. Nothing from me except just to say good luck, everyone. We're really excited by this. Really looking forward to hearing about what you come up with.
Yes, couldn't agree with them more. No, really excited to see. Um, so I guess uh, we'll leave it there if there's no other questions. Um, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, thank you to Ben, Eitan and Beatrice for speaking as well. Uh, and I wish you all um, a great hackathon. Thank <laughs> you.